What is up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about internet marketing specifically for water damage leads. Guys, in this video, we're gonna break down everything from paper call to paper click, Google AdWords, SEO, everything internet marketing basically if you own a restoration company and you want to get more water damage leads specifically from the internet you do not want to miss this video let's go i have never done a video like this before um first i know shane odasier he's a, a former longtime client of ours at united restorers and this is certainly not a dunk on shane video but I've had lots of questions about some of the content he's putting out, specifically in, in the, the realm I work in, which is digital advertising and marketing. Um, I got into the restoration business in the mid 2000s. I joined a restoration franchisor in 09 and uh, oversaw a kind of a, at the time a, a revolutionary um, way of advertising, which was Google pay-per-click, which back then, 2009, 2010 was, um, was pretty new. And when I started this company, United Restorers, in 2013, um, that's all we did up until 2020, just that single service, Google pay-per-click management for restoration companies. We've added a couple services since then, um, but this is our lane. We are experts at all things digital advertising and marketing. And so I thought it might be a good idea to look at some of the content Shane's putting out uh, maybe do some fact checks. I think we're going to agree on some things and maybe disagree on, on other things. But uh, let's watch together and see. All right, guys, so as we get started, go ahead and do me a favor, hit the like and the subscribe button, drop a comment, and let me know where you're watching the video from, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right on into this. Internet marketing for water damage leads. What are we going to cover in this video? We're going to break down the various options that you can get leads for water damage. Like what are they? It's going to be paper call, paper click, SEO, maps marketing. We're going to be looking at the pros of each one, the cons of each one. And then I'll also tell you, did we use them at, not, at my company? Yes or no. And at the end of the video, I will even let you know exactly what we would do today if we were starting all over from scratch. Okay. So let's first start talking about paper call. What is paper call? Well, paper call is going to be what you see right over here in this number two section for Google ads. Well, actually I take that back. Paper call can actually be in section one and two. And here's the reason why paper call is sold as a direct phone call. Okay. It's a direct phone call that's sent to you. That's why they call it paper call. It gets a little confusing because paper call as an acronym is PPC. Well, guess what? Paper click, paper call, they're both PPC. So it gets a little hairy. That's the reason we want to break it down. Paper call is just what it sounds like. You're paying for a phone call. Um, no one uses PPC to describe pay per call. PPC historically uh, has been pay per click. So he, he's, I, I've watched the first part of this and he sort of uh, uh, mistakes his terminology, and that's fine. I mean, that happens. Um, the number two section, Google Ads, is not a pay per call model at all. It is literally a pay per click model. You are paying per click. Uh, Google Guarantee, the number one section, is technically based on a pay-per-call model, but it's not related to what you're probably most familiar with, which is 33 mile radius or leads by phone or 99 calls or service direct or any of the number of, of copycats to the pay-per-call model. Also called just lead generators uh, who have dominated the water damage business for the past 10, 12, 15 years. They're selling you a direct phone call okay this is done as a pay per lead you've heard of pay per lead before but this is specifically pay per lead as a phone call this is where it gets complicated for a lot of you guys because a lot of people use terms interchangeably okay they're like is it pay per call or pay per lead if you're paying for a phone call that's a lead but it's specifically a phone call you can be paying for a lead and the lead could be digital form or it could be a phone call. So just know that a paper call is you're paying for a live phone call and you're paying for that lead, okay? 
these are exclusive leads i hear a lot of people say but yeah are they exclusive leads well bro how are they gonna send you a phone call is it a three-way with another restoration company i mean seriously if they're calling you that's an exclusive lead paper call is always an exclusive lead a good example of one that wouldn't be exclusive might be like home advisor or something like that when they are texting you some information for a customer okay because they can blast that information to three or four contractors but that's not what this is this is pay per call on a paper call you're getting a live phone call yes they are exclusive how could they not be examples of this are going to be 33 mile radius that that would be down here in the google ads um yeah, okay again yes and no so 33 mile radius has the closed auction system um so are they exclusive yes based on what which tier you're in with their their program um and when he refers to 33 mile radius as being down here in the google ad section yeah that's how 33 mile uh, generates all their their leads they use pay-per-click um, so yeah, they will appear in that section. They won't ever appear in the Google guaranteed section because they're not a service provider. They haven't gone through the screening process like your company has to be in the guaranteed section. So he's kind of conflating two different paper call models. And just to reiterate, Google guaranteed is Google's program. Um, it has nothing to do with a service like traditional lead generators such as 33 mile radius. Or Google guaranteed, okay? Paper call is going to be Google ads. Well, I say Google ads, not technically that. These are Google ads, but paper call companies run their own Google ads, okay? Yes. Paper call companies run their own Google ads. So in this example I've got here for water damage ASD, this is probably a company here. If it said like 1-800-LOCAL-PROS or something like that, that's probably gonna be a paper call site like 33 mile radius, okay? But just letting you know where do they land on the map, Google guaranteed is gonna be right up here in number one, and then your ads, from your paper call stuff like 32 mile radius, they will be located right here. It is common that you will have multiple ads, usually two, maybe even three. In this situation, as I grabbed this screenshot today, they only had one. It is kind of rare that they'd only have one. It may be that nobody else is running ads there today. I don't know, okay? Yeah, and sometimes four. Um, four are allowed at the top for our industry, and then you'll usually see two to three more at the bottom. One thing I do wanna point out, Shane is referencing a desktop view of the Google search results page or SERPs for short. In emergency services, 90% of your traffic will be on a phone when they search, not on a desktop. So is it apples to oranges? No, no not really, but we're not quite seeing what the, the end user is more than likely seeing. But just to let you know, that's where they are. Now, here's a little distinction, Google guaranteed. Google guaranteed is also similar in that you sign up for the service, okay? And they're gonna sell you a direct phone call. That's the reason why I put them as a paper call because you get connected directly with a phone call. There may be situations where they may be submitting forms now. Google may change some things up, but for the most part, Google Guaranteed is considered to be a traditional paper call thing, okay? Now, why do they do Google Guaranteed up there like that? I'll be honest with you. Most of us contractors are freaking cavemen. We're not digital marketing experts, okay? Have you ever tried to set up a Google ad? Like, seriously, it's freaking chaos, dude. It's like you it's open true. that thing up and it's just, it's a panel of whatever. I can't even run that stuff. So. It's just very complicated. That's why we typically hire marketing agencies to run those things, okay? But the Google Guaranteed is much more simple, aimed at going for like local services, like contractors, plumbers, HVAC guys, things like that nature, because I may be a dumb caveman, but I can figure out how to turn on Google Guaranteed, okay? Again, I agree to disagree. Um, most of you don't know how to, how to properly configure your Google Guaranteed uh, profile. We put out a video uh, recently, it's pretty short, and it is basically, it's three reasons why your guaranteed ads probably aren't showing, um, and some really simple fixes to that. Check out that video. I try to make it as super simple as possible. I get questions on it all the time, um, but chances are you're missing one or more uh, indicators that Google wants, and that's why your ads aren't showing, you're not getting phone calls. I can't figure out how to run my own ads. So that's the reason why they're putting them up top is they're trying to get more of the local service. That's a Google initiative. They also charge a lot less for a live phone call, Google Guaranteed. Google Guaranteed is much cheaper. You can get a live phone call there 
for maybe 125 bucks, whereas with 33 mile radius of those others, you're gonna be paying 350 at the minimum to 900 bucks in some cases, maybe even a thousand, okay? So, but Google Guaranteed right now is underpriced. There's a lot of value there. Some people, I don't know if they just don't trust the Google Guaranteed. Some markets it works great, some it doesn't, okay? So what are the pros of the paper call? You can get leads immediately. Once those ads are live, dude, you can get the phone running, okay? And I'll tell you this, a lot of you guys will pause your ads whenever you get busy. Number one, don't do that. Don't pause your ads, Agreed. dude. Keep them on. Keep stabilizing the stuff until you're out of equipment. Keep it going. I know you're tired, but like you don't know when your next job's going to be. Like, don't turn the crap off. The only time I ever turn off the ads uh, is when you've got flash flooding. When you've got flash flooding, turn them off. Okay. When you're out of gear, maybe you can turn them off. Right. But just telling you, keep that stuff. To uh, flash flooding or other cat events. Um, do you turn them off? No, there's a, a way to run them correctly. Um, if we're talking like tropical storm or hurricane type thing, typically we will pause in the days leading up to that storm making landfall. Then we will only activate those ads uh, when you've got boots on the ground and evacuation orders have been lifted. So we've got folks coming home and discovering damages. Um, and we're only running them in very, very selective zip codes. So I don't want an entire metro. I want um, suburbs where we've got higher end residential, maybe gated communities, golf course communities, things like that. Um, we have done this time and time again with storms. We've got clients that they go, go into an area and they, they may only spend 500 bucks or a thousand bucks on ads, but they've locked down a neighborhood because we were incredibly strategic with where those ads showed. So with flash flooding, yeah, you can spend 20, 30 grand if you're not monitoring when and where those ads are showing after an event like that. Um, and then on the flip side of when you run out of equipment, Sunbelt uh, exists. You can rent equipment. I highly recommend it. Um, and you can get to know competitors in your market and use their equipment or have them work on job sites with you. That actually happens, uh, believe it or not. And I've seen great things come as a result of it, where you've got multiple companies working on larger projects together or sharing equipment, labor, et cetera. So um, really, if you're into that storm chasing mindset or you're thinking about getting into it, um, you've got to be bold. You've got to be courageous with some of these decisions you make and not just tap out when your last DHU and air mover leave the van. Turned on. Most of you guys, but I'm tired. Don't want to hear it. All right, keep it going. Now, if you do turn it off on any given time, I'll tell you this. If you've ever had the ads pause for five days or a week or something, or you're out of town, whatever you get back. The cool thing is this, when you turn them on, it is not at all uncommon that you go live and within an hour, baby, you got a call and you're out on a wet job. Like it works that fast. So the pros, as soon as those dads are live, baby, you can get that call. Another good. Does it happen? Yeah. Does it happen all the time? No. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to it. We're in the chaos business. Um, there is consistency in chaos. You know, we can, we can look at the course of a year and know, when we're going to be busy and when we're probably going to be slow. Um, but eh, yeah, I've heard restorers tell me this, you know, within an hour or two of turning ads back on, Oh, I landed a big one. Was it anything magical? Did Google, you know, uh, boost your ad because you had been paused for a couple of days? Probably not. But anyway, good thing about the paper call stuff your biggest jobs you're ever going to get are going to come from paper call stuff after hours the biggest jobs you will get for water damage will be paper call after hours ask me how i know multi-story commercial losses in the middle of the night this is where they're going to come from okay after weekends residential plumbers are my favorite i love them okay but they're not going to send you a leak in a fifty thousand square foot building okay a general maintenance guy um he's right and again he's using paper call again and again and again and, and what he means, whether he realizes it or not, is pay-per-click uh, in the Google ad section. I'm not seeing a lot of commercial come through Google Guaranteed. Um, but with pay-per-click ads, PPC ads, uh, yeah, commercial comes through there. Uh, is there any rhyme or reason to it? No. The way a residential customer searches for a service you provide is identical to the way a commercial customer searches for a service you provide. Um, in Shane's case specifically, he was very smart in branding his company where it wasn't Shane's water damage company. Um, it was a little more vague than that. And I believe that worked in his favor. He had a very, very professional look and feel. And again, he didn't 
pigeonhole himself into just water damage or just restoration. Um, again, this is some of Shane's genius at work with how he branded his company. He got commercial projects like that uh, to the point where I had, at the, at the time, he was a client of ours. I had other clients calling me saying, why is this guy getting all this commercial work? And it really came down to he had a very intelligent, strategic brand look and feel. Um, so, yes, commercial comes through pay-per-click. We've seen seven-figure projects come through a, a $14 click. It happens. Uh, he walked in and the sprinklers pop. Bro, it is what it is, okay? So the pros, you get big commercial jobs. You can also dispute them, okay? Now the con. No, you can't. Not with pay-per-click. With Google Guaranteed, you can. Um, you have to actually accept or reject that call. That is one of the things Google counts against you. The time it takes you to accept or reject that call. Um, yes, you can go back and contest. You know, are they better or worse than a company like, let's say, 33 Mile? I don't know. Um, pay per click, Google Ads, Section 2, which he's highlighted here. You cannot contest. It's a click. That's what you're paying for. They're very expensive. We already talked about that. 350 to 1000 when I say you can dispute them, you pay a premium for these things and they typically will make a guarantee that it's going to be a decision maker or an owner or something like that. Lola, sorry, my dog is here today. Come here, Lola. Let me introduce you to my dog. I don't Free bring my dogs to me, work, dude. so I'm going <laughs> to... This is Lola. This is my content she's adorable, on Fridays but... for ads. Uh, you can dispute them, okay? And you should dispute them if they're not good qualified. They should verify that it's going to be a wet job. You get to do an inspection. It's going to be the owner, Okay. And most of those big companies will allow you to do that. But the con is, again, it is expensive. You get a lot of bogus calls, okay? There'll be web crawlers. Sometimes they'll have companies uh, like a bot that will crawl the web and it will see a link and it'll hit it and it'll call it. And I don't know, I guess it's maybe other paper call companies doing it as an attack on other paper call companies. I haven't figured that out. But if you've ever answered the phone, Leads by Phone was really bad about this. This is one of the paper call companies that I quit using because like it just oh, it just drive you crazy. And like you would answer the phone and it would just be a, a robot or something like, hello, hello. And it was nobody there. And here was the problem with it. If you don't answer the phone within three rings or four rings, you get charged for that call regardless. And that's fine, okay? But like eventually you're going to miss a call, guys. That's what's going to happen. But I don't want to have a bunch of bots getting crawled because what will really piss me off is when I get billed 400 bucks and I know it was a bot, okay? Okay, there's a little bit of misinformation here. Um, the way to eliminate robocalls from your life is to uh, not publish your phone number ever, anywhere, in print, digital, etc. Um, the nature of robocalls is this. The second your number is made public, you will get robocalls. You will get uh, software that crawls your website, scrapes those phone numbers, adds you to a database. And it does not mean that some robot someplace is doing Google searches and clicking on links um, and calling you and, and, and charging you for that. Um, if your number exists on the internet, expect robocalls. It's how it works. Um, customers who have never done pay-per-click before and turn ads, you know, uh, uh, live um, in the first week or two, will start complaining about this. And and the conversation is, uh, these these this software, these bots couldn't find you last week, but now you're at the top of Google, so of course they're finding you. They're not clicking on anything, um, but they are looking on on your website, finding your number, and adding you to that database. So if you don't want robocalls, um, don't ever publish your phone number. Unfortunately, you would be out of business pretty quickly if you did that. Um, you can do, uh, Apple and Android both have pretty good spam call features now where you can screen those out. Um, and you can add your number to the do not call list. I've been on a do not call list for more than 10 years and we do zero pay-per-click advertising. Uh, I still get at least half a dozen spam calls per day without fail. Why? My phone number is everywhere online. Uh, because I'm a business and I want people to call me and give me business. So it's a it's just the nature of things. It it is really probably unfortunately gonna take some sort of legislation uh to prevent or eliminate robocalls in the future. I don't see that happening. It's a uh, I'm sure a multi multi million dollar business. Um but yeah don't the chain is incorrect in saying that someone is going to a, a, a software is going to go onto your website or click an ad or click a link and then call you from that. Um, I can't speak to the lead generators 
um, and how they work. But just know if your phone exists on the internet, your phone number exists on the internet, you will get robocalls, just how it works. So anyway, that's the other thing. You get a lot of bogus leads. If you get 10 leads, it's not uncommon to only land three to four jobs, okay? Don't let those those dudes lie to you. They'll tell you that they get this big, huge, high closing ratio. That may be fine and true, but I'm just telling you, out of 10 calls, maybe four of them are what you're gonna land, but you should be able to dispute many of the other ones, okay? And the undesirable stuff, you go to undesirable locations, you'll get called out in trailer parks in the ghetto, okay? You don't always get to do as tight targeting that you want with this paper call stuff. I mean, you'll get a bunch of broke people if you're not careful. And if you live in the ghetto or you live in a trailer, I'm sorry, bud, no offense, I grew up in a trailer myself, but I don't wanna come do a water job for you, all right? Um, with paper call, yeah, it, the most lead generators are going to cast a pretty wide net over a metro. Um, Google Guaranteed, again, we're we're kind of, we're throwing Google Guaranteed into the same bucket as 33 Mile and, and Leads by Phone. Um, you can get incredibly specific with your targeting in the Google Guaranteed portal. Uh, you can use zip code targeting, you can exclude zip codes. Uh, that's all up to you. What most restorers will do when they set up their Google Guaranteed is the old, I'll drive two hours in any direction for a good job. And unfortunately, there's just too much competition these days to try to cover that kind of real estate. Um, our philosophy is aim small, miss small. If a higher end residential client is best for your brand, well, figure out where they live and target those zip codes. It's pretty simple. Um, if you're on a program with like 33 mile, you're not gonna have that nuanced control over what you're targeting. So I agree with him in this respect. Um, when he gets into pay-per-click into the Google ad section, we'll talk targeting a little bit more. Fair enough. We got to be able to do this to make money. So that's the downside for that. Did we use them? Absolutely. We did, dude. Made a lot of money from them. You should too. Paper call. I do love them. They've got pros. They got cons and you can see them in sections one and two. Okay. Now let's talk about pay-per-click. Pay-per-click is going to only be right here, not up there. Okay, so it's only gonna be in section two. Examples of pay-per-click is gonna be Google Ads, just as you see here. These are typically gonna be ran by marketing agencies, okay? So there will typically be a company and you know whatever media, it'll be a guy and he's gonna set up all this ad work for you. You'll typically pay him a retainer. Every click gets billed directly on your card. I didn't put this in here. So if you guys are paying an agency like three or 500 bucks to run your ads, they probably suck. Okay, here's the biggest problem I see with people doing pay-per-click. You hire somebody that doesn't know what they're doing and they don't, they've never done restoration AdWords, so they don't know how that works. And then you don't pay enough. You're hiring somebody because they're cheap and then you're not buying enough leads, right? And they're that. running crappy ads and so that's your fault for hiring them. If you're going to hire somebody, make it somebody that's good and knows what they're doing. Um, they're gonna charge anywhere between a thousand to two to three thousand dollars a month retainer for these services, usually between one and two thousand. If it's two grand, it's two grand. But just know this, I don't care how much you pay them, but you at least need to be spending three to $5,000 a month on clicks, just on clicks. $5,000 in clicks, okay? And then $2,000 on the dude, at least spend seven grand a month. If you're in Nashville, seven grand a month, that's a good budget, okay? The problem is you don't wanna pay $1,500 retainer and then pay $1,500 in ads. That's just dumb, you're not getting enough, right? So that's the biggest mistake I see, all right? Um, but first, the one to 3,000, more than we charge. Uh, we don't charge 3,000 for our monthly retainer. Um, I agree, yeah, the $500 guy uh, that you found on Fiverr, probably not best for your, your uh, ROI. Um, on budget, so what you actually spend on clicks, um, I, I agree to an extent, it's all market specific. So if you're out in the boonies in a, a town of 50,000, you can get away with a $1,500 a month budget. If you're in Nashville, that might take 15,000 a month. Uh, to be truly competitive in the Nashville market. Why? Well, there's a lot of people and there's a lot of restoration companies who want that work. So again, it's totally market specific. We've had long-term clients who kind of live in the middle of nowhere, but run very successful companies, um, spend eight, 900 bucks a month up to 2,500 and they're covering a very large geographic area. But again, they're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then we've got you know, large companies in huge metros that are super competitive that spend 40,000 a month or 50,000 a month. Um, so it's all market dependent. It, it is based on competition and the number of people that will potentially see your ads. Um, so yes and no. 
for whatever that's worth, right? So what are the pros of the pay-per-click? You can get cheaper leads, right? You can get leads for as little as yep. 30, 40 bucks Cut up with a click. Middle. It can turn right into a phone call. And so the next thing is uh, uh, you can appear higher in the search results because you can set your bid higher, okay? So one of the things you could say is like, I will pay up to $150 for a click. And if that's the case, so let's say that 33 mile radius was set for 200 bucks a click. You could say, I wanna pay 300 bucks a click and your ad will be stacked on top of theirs, okay? So that's how the auction goes. No, um, and, and no with a caveat. So yes, Google Ads is an auction. It's an auction that happens in real time. Um, I might bid on a term like water damage companies near me and there may be five or 10 or 15 other companies bidding on that exact term exact, at that exact moment. Um, spending more money on that, that phrase or that, that keyword doesn't necessarily mean that you get yourself to the top and, and you get the phone call. Um, that kind of thinking is why cost per click rates around the country in certain markets um, is astronomical. Last week, we averaged $282 in the Tampa market for one click. And it's because of that thinking. If I spend more, I'm going to get more work. Um, there are several dozen things that go into determining positioning. Um, what you are willing, willing to risk on your bid is one of those, but he's missing quality score. He's missing um, uh, targeted locations, um, a, a, a number of things he's totally missing that contribute to where you show and what you pay for that that ad placement um, so do not equate if i throw more more money at the problem i will get more work it doesn't quite work like that some management some finesse and some strategy is uh, definitely required um, but again that's why some of you are paying astronomically high cost per click rates misinformation and usually, whoever the first one is gets the clicks in most cases, all right, for whatever that's worth. That's true. If you're not first, you're last. That's kind of the one thing I always said in AdWords and everything I was marketing. Me personally, I like to be in all of them. I want to be in Google Guaranteed. I want to be in Google Ads. Dude, I used to be on all of them. I'd be in Google Guaranteed, and then I would have all three of the AdWords spots. It was my AdWords, two of the paper call companies, and I was first on Maps. I was the only option in every situation, and that's what I like. That's called, like, omnipresence, okay? That's everywhere. And you can... Okay, um, let's 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 chat for a second. Okay, our, our philosophy, and it has been this way for years, is uh, search engine result page saturation or domination. So when Shane talks about being in the Google Guaranteed spot, being in the ad spot, being in Maps, being organic, which he he decided to to not do anymore. Um, yes, that is the key to consistent leads from the internet. You just saturate page one of search results and it has a big impact on um, who that, that customer calls. What he's describing here though is a violation of Google's terms of service. So he's describing being in the Google pay-per-click auction, that section two, three times. That's called double serving or double dipping. And it actually violates Google's terms of service. You can have all of your paid accounts, all of your ad accounts suspended, and you will be disallowed from ever advertising with Google again. Not worth the risk. Uh, I'm learning that perhaps when he was a client of ours, he was doing the same thing, not ideal. Um, some clients have come to me in the past and said, hey, let's get another ad account and, um, and, and do this very thing. And it's a big fat no from us. I'm not going to risk uh, my, my client, uh, the account that we've created for them or any other account that we manage because he's trying to monopolize or double dip um, in the, uh, the, the paid ad space. Don't do that. Very, very bad idea. Um, it is not only, it's not super ethical. Uh, it will get you banned to where you cannot use Google as a paid ad platform any longer. Let's, uh, let's roll back now. You can do that because you're gonna spend a little money but it's worth it okay so you can pay Not more per click and you can show up there you can't do that with 33 mile radius it is what it is they're gonna charge or they're gonna charge uh service direct will let you pay more too but anyway those are the two for that you can turn them on and off without penalty so google doesn't penalize you for turning them off whereas like 33 mile radius service direct those paper call companies if you turn them on and turn them off they may lower your score a little bit and just may not send you as many leads I can't prove for a fact that they do that but i think they do okay and i've been told that so what um you can pause ads for a certain amount of time. Um, and it's 
questionable on whether that's weeks or just days. Um, it can, having ads pause for any length of time can impact your quality score. Your quality score is a one out of 10 rating that Google assigns every keyword in your keyword list. The higher the quality score you have, the less you're gonna pay for better positioning in that ad auction. The lower the quality score, the more you're gonna pay or you're, you're not gonna be showing up in that, that four pack, one of those top four ads. Um, so a low quality score and the potential risk of uh, pausing for any length of time and impacting that quality score negatively is, it's not really worth it. Um, we certainly pause for days at a time uh, when a big storm rolls in and like Shane talked at the beginning of the video, you know, equipment taps out, manpower taps out, you have to pause um, or you're just overwhelmed with calls. Um, yeah, we can turn them off, but we want to limit that as much as possible so that we're not doing any long term damage to the ad account. What are the cons of the pay per click? You can't dispute anything. So you can get some little joke or some little butthole to sit there and just like click on your ad and then run up your bill or whatever. That that can't happen. You can get like little IP blocking software, I think, to protect that stuff. We never did. It wasn't that big of a problem, but you don't get to dispute it. Okay. You don't get to dispute it. Okay. He's wrong on the, the butthole clicking on ads. Um, so here's some history. Uh, nine, 10 years ago, um, it was absolutely possible to click multiple times on a competitor's ad. And here's what it would do. Um, it would spin through your daily budget. It would cost you real money. Um, and by spinning through your daily budget, it would take those ads offline. It would then cost you money. Um, and usually within about a week, Google would go back. They would count that as an invalid click and they would refund you um, the, those charges. Now the problem was some damage was done. You were taken offline for that day or those two days or whatever. Um, to Google's credit, and I'm, I'm not a fan of Google, I'm certainly not a fanboy. I, I think they're actually a horrible company, but um, to Google's credit, they have gotten uh, increasingly better year over year at protecting their advertisers against what they would call an invalid click. They will never use the term click fraud. Um, but now if someone were to try to do that, it, it's the old story that I've heard 1500 times, so-and-so went to an Apple store and they did a bunch of searches and they clicked on my ads and it cost me a bunch of money, et cetera. It's an old wives tale at this point. I'm sure some, probably Florida man did this at some point in the past, um, but I have heard every version of that story. And the reality is it can't happen today. So what happens today if someone does a double click on your ad, it doesn't count against your budget. It doesn't take you offline for the day because you've exceeded a daily budget and it costs you no money. In 11 years of our existence as United Restorers, we have had to contest uh, twice what was clearly click fraud. We knew it was click fraud because we were running IP blocking software. And in one case we had uh, over 5,000 clicks in a span of five hours, all originating from India. That was clearly like a, like a, a bot farm. And it was an attack. Someone had hired a bot farm to go after a client. Um, and we could prove it. It took 30 days, um, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls with Google, but we got all those charges reversed. They had never seen anything like it, according to the Googlers I was, I was working with. Um, but we had, we had literal IP addresses on every single click with time date stamps. And so it was quite easy to prove that this was an attack. Um, the other issue, a lot smaller, it was a couple hundred dollars. We got those reversed. Um, it, there was a lot of, you know, we could see in the data that something was up. Um, yes, there is the argument that I've posed to Google of if the second click is fraudulent or invalid, was not the first click also invalid? And what I have seen over the last, especially three years, um, a click will come in and Google will not count it against you because a second click came in at some point later. Is that just a little old lady searching and clicking and not realizing she's clicked before? It could be. Could it be um, uh, you know, malicious? Could be. Um, but Google is an advertising platform. They're not a search engine. They exist because you pay them money to advertise on their platforms. So they are, to their credit, um, pretty good at taking care of their advertisers. So um, can you dispute anything? Yes, technically you can. 
Um, but the whole idea of someone sitting in an Apple store and clicking on your ad, it, I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. I'm sure you've heard many versions of it in the past too, um, but not these days. 10 years ago, yeah, it happened. Not today. You will make more money on pay-per-click, but you're going to spend more on pay-per-click. It was Q4 19. We made like $76,000 of water mitt. Okay. Water mitt, Q3, 76 grand. I spent 15, got 76 in return. That was good. I My think. paper call stuff, I only made 66, but I spent like $2,500. And that's because I was able to dispute all of those. You understand? 76, that's much more, that's more money, but I spent way more too to get those ads because I can't dispute it. When you get really. If he was using Google Guaranteed, which was um, a year into beta at that point, the calls were dollars. So the cost was a lot cheaper. He's also not counting his time that it took to dispute these calls. I'm sure his time's worth a lot of money. Um, so yes, I get it. The numbers are five years old. He recorded this about five months ago, but he's talking about 2019 and it's now 2024. Um, so a little bit of an apples and oranges comparison, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll continue. Really good at answering the phone and you know how to dispute the calls, then you can get that number down. SEO is typically what they call organic results, backlinks and blogs, that's that stuff way down here. So what are the pros? It's persistent, like it doesn't turn on and doesn't turn off. That stuff, those results are there. You're not paying to get it on there, okay? Now you can pay companies to run your SEO, which you are. That's another misnomer. SEO is not free either, because you ain't doing it. You're paying somebody to get your SEO up there, so you're still paying for it. Now the difference is once you get it up there, it'll persist. Right, that's why I call it persisting. But Google Maps would do that too. So anyway, we'll get into Google Maps in a minute. Cons, it's at the bottom of the page. Okay, did we use them? Yes, we actually we had little plugins and and it worked for some things. Okay, like specifically there was some bio and trauma that we did, but it was only on certain searches in certain markets. And the reason why we would get it is because there are a few keywords, guys, that nothing shows up for Google Guaranteed. Nothing shows up for the ads and nothing shows up in maps. There are some bizarre one-off outlier type queries in which the first thing at the top of the page would be SEO. And that again, that was typically on bio and trauma that we got that. You might get it on some mold, but I think they've pretty well fixed all that now, the algorithm. Um, yeah, so what he's describing, and I'm gonna go back to, to SEO in general. Um, so Shane's describing what Google calls sensitive events. And so like COVID-19 was a sensitive event. We could do zero paid advertising um, using terms like disinfection, indoor air quality, or certainly coronavirus, COVID-19. Um, biohazard and trauma tend to fall into those categories. And so Google will not show ads uh, for those things. If you've ever you know, done a search for like a firearm, that is also considered, uh, uh, it's in the family of sensitive events, it's, it's banned. You cannot advertise for firearms on, on, in Google paid ads. Um, but certain terms, yes, will not show a paid ad result. Um, now, the flip side is we do biohazards for many companies and you know I know the, the terms to bid on and what we can't bid on and we show up and they convert very, very well. Um, but let's go back to SEO and the a couple of things he said. First, SEO isn't persistent. It has to be managed. Um, it is not something that once you're on page one, you stay there forever. Um, if you noticed your call volume from organic dropping after the summer of 2022, it's probably because you were caught up in one of the, the, the largest uh, algorithm changes to how search works that Google has ever done. Um, that summer, July of 2022, Google made a ton of changes to how search works and it nuked sites um, from page one. I mean, some sites ended up on page 12 overnight. Um, so it's something where you need to be working with an SEO company. SEO is super affordable. And again, we've kind of preached for years after the website. The website is one of the most important components in your entire advertising arsenal. It is where you bring these people into and it is what should be convincing them to call you. After the website, SEO, best investment you can make in your advertising and marketing. Um, and we send most, you know, when we get a prospect call, who's probably not ready, you know, financially uh, for paid advertising, we refer them right out for SEO. It's something that it's not going to work for four to six months. That's how SEO works. But once it does and it's um, strategically managed, yeah, you're going to show up on, on page one. And the reality is there are people like me 
who understand the components of the search results page and don't click on ads. If I'm searching for something, I'm usually going to maps and looking at reviews or I'm going right down to the organic results. Um, I know that the, the companies there are established. They've been there for a long time. Um, and typically I'm doing a pretty long tail keyword search. I'm looking for something very, very specific. And if I see a page down there that speaks directly to that thing, that's what I'm clicking on. And it's not uncommon for me to go to page three or four in a search result, trying to find that exact thing that I'm looking for. And I'm, I'm not the only one like that. Um, so SEO is not dead by any stretch. Why Shane stopped? I, I know the company that was managing his SEO. They did great work for him. Um, but SEO is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, I'll give you an example. We have a long-term client who last year, you know, if you remember, uh, winter of 2022 came early. The Northeast had a ton of snowfall. And uh, what would normally be like a late January, early to mid-February storm season for winter weather uh, really started in December, right? And so in January, actually it was uh, New Year's Eve, this client calls me and says, we wanna pause all pay-per-click for the month of January. We are overwhelmed. So we paused, um, there, was, there was really, by the time we turned it back on, um, hadn't done any damage to the account, but they had so much work through the month of January, other than paying an SEO company a management fee, um, it was their biggest January to date um, they've been around 25 years, so that's a big January, and they didn't pay for a single phone call. It all came through organic results and, frankly, their reputation uh, because it's incredible. So SEO, that's your friend. Um, SEO is the gift that keeps on giving. It just needs a little maintenance and management, um, and, again, super affordable. Or the McGoogle. So, again, we're talking seven, eight years ago, this is what we were doing. We stopped doing it a few years in and we turned it off. So that's the SEO, okay? Maps marketing. So this is the other section, okay? It's easy to see where it's at. It's in the map section, okay? So you've got the reviews here and you've got the map. This is kind of what I call the new SEO. You can have ads in maps. So you remember what I told you guys in other videos, Google is not your friend. Google ain't your friend, bro. It used true. to be SEO was all the rage. Way down here, like SEO is the best, okay? And then they started stacking maps on top of SEO. Then they started stacking AdWords on top of that. Now they got Google Guaranteed on top of that. The best thing is now at the bottom, bro. They're gonna continue doing that. Then they put Google Maps together and now what do they got on top? They've got ads on top of the maps and they've got Google Guaranteed on the top of the maps. But if you'll notice, one of the things that they're doing- Yeah, again, like I said, Google is an ad company. Um, search is just a conduit for them to sell ads. So what, you know, I've noticed over the last, you know, over a decade doing this is that search results page is becoming one giant ad and it will continue that way um, where SEO is continually pushed down. Uh, Google can't monetize SEO, uh, but they can monetize Google Guaranteed and Google Pay Per Click and now Maps. Uh, frankly, I mean, the ad in Maps, that's been around for six or seven years. That's not a new or novel thing. Um, all of our clients who we do pay-per-click for have an added maps. Um, it, when it shows is really up to Google. I can set it to show all the time. It doesn't mean it will. Um, it is up to Google and it's based on that specific user and their search history, location, um, uh, uh, many, many different factors go into that. But the algorithm is what determines whether or not an ad shows. Um, this ad you can see is not relevant to what he searched. It's a roofing company. They're showing up for a water damage result in maps. So that's a kind of a wasted uh, potential ad click. Um, and I wouldn't call it new SEO. It's, it is really part of SEO. Um, and it's something that when Google developed, when they took maps as a product and decided, okay, we can now plug businesses into maps and then link reviews together and then get these businesses to advertise with us. Um, it's good SEO that keeps your business up there and reviews, um, and always your proximity to the customer. Um, we can get into that later, but I wouldn't call it new SEO. I wouldn't call it maps marketing. Um, and if a company comes to you and says, we can get you on maps more than once, or we can get you throughout your market, um, that's a scam. Um, you are allowed, 
if, if your business has one physical address, you get one maps listing, one GMB, Google My Business listing. When you try to spoof those using a UPS store or a FedEx store or something like that, um, again, violation of Google's terms of service, um, when they catch you, and they inevitably will, they will suspend every account that you're linked to, and you will not appear any longer on Google My Business. Um, this is a trend that I saw literally 10 years ago, and then I've seen um, in the last two years come up of, you know, go get your multiple GMBs, and this is how you can market, and it's super cheap, and just pay us a couple hundred dollars. Um, again, it's don't fall for the next shiny object. It's a scam and it will negatively impact you. I cannot tell you how many restorers, which is, this is what I do all day. I talk to restorers and how many of them have had, uh, my business accounts suspended, um, because they've tried some of these, you know, scams. Don't do it. Doing. Can I go back? The Google guaranteed is way up top. If you notice, they now have the stars and the ratings up top. Why? Because they've seen, learned, and understood that the public likes to have that five stars as like a rating system. True. And I, honestly, I think Google's figured that out, and all they're doing is including that to, so they can start having people stop clicking on the maps and start clicking on Google guaranteed. That is yep. what they're doing. Here's the next True. thing that they're doing that's underhanded is they're putting ads in the Google Maps, okay? So it's the new SEO because it's it's the best cheap or free stuff you can do, but now you can see they can have ads. So you can see where it says sponsored right there. When you're running Google ads and you got a Google Maps, a GMB setup, which I think most of you do anyway, there are times that they will slide your ad in the Google Maps section. Now. When we were running ads, I couldn't figure out the rhyme or reason of how they stuck it there. They did just like random auction placement. So I couldn't figure yeah. out how to make it always turn on there. But here's all I'm trying to tell you. Google ain't your friend, bro. They ain't your friend. See how sponsor is not really big letters right there. They put it right up top. They don't put it at the bottom. They put it at the top. Google ain't your friend. A yeah, lot of yeah, the maps marketing, company. that's what I call the new SEO. Some of the SEO agencies... They say they're doing SEO, but they're really doing maps optimization. In my view, those SEO companies aren't doing a really good job distinguishing themselves because this is kind of a new breed of marketing. If I was an SEO agency and I was doing Google Maps, I would quit calling it SEO. I would call it map marketing. That's just a tip from me to you guys, okay? But you can run this on your own too. Again, Maps has been around for years. Um, it had marketing agencies capitalized yet on it. Yes, scam, scam companies have. Um, but a traditional SEO company, they're absolutely going to use maps as part of the strategy in making sure your, your site ranks organically. Um, and yes, GMB, absolutely something you have to pay attention to. Um, again, GMB is incredibly limited and GMB, Google My Business, the maps, um, it's, it is, its greatest limitation is that if the customer who you're trying to get um, is five miles away from you, and there are 10 restorers between you and them, that customer is never going to see your map result. Um, they're going to see the other 10. This is how it works. Google has location targeting kind of down to a science. If you don't believe me, open up Google Maps in your home tonight and walk to your kitchen and walk to your bathroom and go down to the, to the garage, and you'll see that little blue orb follow you around. It's pinging off of Wi-Fi routers, and it's pulling GPS signals. And it knows pretty accurately exactly where you are. And all of that is happening when a search is being performed. I, again, most likely 90% of the time from your phone. So GMB, great product, but it is has a very, very narrow focus. And any marketing company that says they can expand that focus is, is doing it in violation of Google's terms of service. I think I'll have a video if I don't already somewhere about a deep dive on Google, my business, and GMB. We'll do that on different yeah, days. Again, the out. pros, it's organic and they're free leads. Yep. They're warmer leads because a lot of people are going to be dealing with you because you're local. They want to deal with local people. That's why they're there and there's less competition. And that's why it's really important to appear in this three-pack here because there's only three options. Well, in this case, there's four, but in most cases, they want to be in three. The cons, it takes a while to appear here, okay? You got to get your GMB set up. It's got to get seasoned a little bit. You got to get some Google reviews. There are softwares that you can use. We've got one that we give to our clients. If you want to know more about that, go to workmachine.com. 130 Google reviews. The, the software he's talking about um, would be a review aggregator. Um, we, you, we recommend a product called So Tell Us, but there's 
bird's eye, there's several larger companies. Um, so Telus, I think, is, is pretty smart software. All this is is an app that lives in your technician's phone. And when they're going to ask for that review, they hand the customer their phone, they do some login, they leave a review, it posts um, under that customer's name. It's their, their Google profile. And you can filter reviews. Um, that's, it's a cool service, it, pretty affordable. Um, the tried and true is just doing it the old fashioned way and asking for a review and maybe following up in a couple of days with a phone call doing quality control and again asking for that review. Reviews are the great equalizers. Uh, if you run a small independent restoration company, let's say that does under a million five a year, you can compete with SurfPro. You can compete with the, the huge, you know, $20 million a year independent in your market if you can out review them. Um, because just like you or I, we don't, we don't buy no star, one star, two star products on Amazon. We buy five star products with lots and lots and lots of reviews. So I call it uh, affirmation of internet strangers. That's what we need before we make a buying decision in this day and age and reviews is what puts you there. So get reviews, ask for reviews and don't, don't buy reviews. Don't buy the fake ones. Um, Google purges those and will penalize you for it. There's no shortcuts here. You just got to do good work uh, and, and ask for reviews. 96 and 20, which one are you going to call? Okay, which one are you going to call? You're going to call the ones with the more Google reviews. So you need to get more reviews than others. You'll have to use the software to get that done. Okay, so it takes a while to appear and it's underneath the ads. Did we use them? Absolutely, we did. So if we were starting all over, what would we do? How would it work? Well. I can tell you this, the first thing I'd do is I'd go to workmachine.com and I'd book a call. We've got a 30 day program, a 30 day test drive, and I can guarantee you we get you jobs in the very first 30 days. Guaranteed, mm. okay? And that's only because I'm gonna show you to do this. It's paper call. Paper call is what I would do, because I'm, I'm just gonna help you do it, okay? I'm gonna show you which companies to do, make sure you answer the phone the right way, you sign up for the right services, not the wrong services. But if I were starting all over today and I had to get a water job fast, that's what I would do. I would go do my paper call stuff, okay? Um, we actually recommend using some paper call services, uh, especially during the first year. Um, but here's, here's the, the catch. We have a, an old video I did called Opiates Will Kill You, and it, it, it's about lead generators. Um, using the metaphor of the human body and, uh, and sickness, right? There, there's a time and place for an opiate uh, when the body is dealing with pain, needs pain management, and needs to heal. Um, an opiate is a really good way of helping you push through that pain and allowing your body to heal. The problem is um, when you get stuck on those, well, eventually it's gonna kill you. And with any restoration company, their reliance on lead generation um, can cripple them. I have seen companies where um, maybe the, the relationship with that lead generator or that paper call model has soured and they're out of business because they don't have any incoming work. They've never took responsibility over their their internet presence, their brand identity online, their reputation. Uh, they're certainly not doing anything um, like Google Pay Per Click, which again, that's that's how they're buying calls from lead generators, is because the lead generator is managing the pay per click and inbounding the call and then selling the call. Um, so. Yes, paper call, there's a time and a place. It should be short term and it should be a, like a ramp to get you to the next level, which is taking ownership of all of your lead streams, both digital and analog, you know, internet and face to face. Um, so maybe watch that video. Maybe it'll help you look at, you know, lead generation or paper call in a different way. Um, I, I would certainly hope a new company wouldn't. Um, use lead generators that entire first year, that's a lot of money going out. Um, when you could use them maybe for two, three months and then take a lot of that money and then reinvest it into your advertising and marketing budgets, um, I think that's a much, much safer, wiser um, use of your funds. Now, about the other things, I would do everything by the end of year one, okay? I would start doing all the other stuff except the SEO. Traditional SEO, I wouldn't mess with at all. But I would do, I wouldn't do Google ads out of the do gate SEO. either. Do and SEO. Do SEO first. My test drive, and I, I tell you, don't do that because you got to find a marketing agency to run it. You can't run it. And you got to have good attribution to know where the lead's coming from. You got to have a good system to set it up. You can hit critical mass just from the stuff we show you in our 30. I'm going to rant real quick about attribution. Um, what we coach is 
you have a, a, an advertising and marketing budget, or you should. Um, we suggest putting all of those dollars, what you're doing with pay-per-click, what you're doing with Google Guaranteed, what you're doing with SEO, social media, et cetera, putting all those in one digital advertising and marketing bu budget. And then from that bucket, extrapolating your ROI. Um, there is some uh, analysis paralysis that can go on when you're so hyper-focused on attribution um, and you're not, that's all you're focused on is where did that call come from? Um, when you generalize, it, it becomes a lot easier. You're seeing, okay, what, is, what are we spending with digital? What are we getting from digital? What are we spending analog, you know, with our salespeople, with uh, plumber, plumber giveaways at the, at the local Ferguson, uh, the door knocking, the chambers of commerce. If you just separate it out that way, I, I, what I found from, from what our clients have reported, um, it's way easier to track and they have a perfectly clear understanding of what's working and what isn't working. The problem with digital attribution is that any call routing system, any call tracking system is not perfect. A lot of them are way far from perfect. Um, services like CallRail, which says it will differentiate between a, a direct lead, someone who has typed in your do domain name versus they came to you uh, through SEO versus pay-per-click, yeah, it doesn't work. Um, we tried it for two and a half years, hoping it was going to work. Um, Google has a new new tool in the in the Google Ad Portal that we're piloting that we think has some some promise, um, but we don't have enough data yet to say. Oh, it will absolutely attribute every single call correctly. Uh, current products on the market just don't do it. They they confuse a paid lead versus an organic lead all the time to the point where we just stopped and went back to. Digital bucket, analog bucket, you know what you're spending on both. Now attribute or, you know, or, or uh, track your ROI from, from those two buckets and be done with it. Um, focus on doing really good work, not where did this call come from. Um, I, you'll, you'll be happier. Three day test drive. And by the way, critical mass is defined as this, the moment at which your profit is greater than your expenses, okay? We can get you enough leads or show you how to, to figure out what is next for you. I'll tell you this, guys, you turn these on, you may not be profitable because you may have a problem following directions. You may not answer the phone the right way like we tell you to. If you do, you're gonna get billed, you won't be able to dispute it. The other problem that you might have would be this, you get out there and you can't sign the job because you've got a sales problem, okay? You don't know how to sell the job properly. That could be a problem too. You might sign the job, but then they won't let you start until the adjuster looks at it. That's a leadership and sales problem. So to, to recap, again, I'm not dunking on Shane. I like Shane. Shane's a good guy. Um, again, I've, I've known him for years. He was a longtime client of ours. Um, here, here's where I'm, I'm at with it. Someone pointed this video out to me a couple months ago. I watched it. I had some laughs. Um, and then I've heard, I've heard more and more people refer to it. And I, you know, I knew enough about the video to where I thought, okay, I'm going to have to actually sit down and watch this thing start to finish. It's 21 minutes. Um, and so I did that and, uh, and then decided to do it with you all. Um, because Shane is a restorer. He was a former, you know, general contractor. They did really good work. He got into restoration. I want to say like 2016, 2017, something like that. Um, and I, and I'm sure he's, he's good. Everything we saw from him, it was great working with them. Um, but I don't, I don't think he's a digital marketing and advertising expert in the restoration space. I know I am. I know our brand is. Um, we have a, a pretty superb res, uh, you know, reputation. And a lot of what he's talking about, we pioneered. In some cases, I personally pioneered. Um, so I, what I know is I wouldn't uh, put out a video on how to dry a multi-story um, water damage uh, with like fire breaks involved and, you know, I wouldn't do that. That's not my lane. It's not my specialty. Um, I've seen it, you know, I have some understanding of it, but I'm not an expert in it. And I certainly wouldn't try to coach or sell a coaching course uh, on a topic like that. So I, I guess moral of the story, um, I am seeing more and more restorers turned gurus. Um, and this is not a new thing. I've, again, I've been in the business a while, um, and a lot of things tend to, you know, circle back. Um, be skeptical. If someone was a restorer or owned a restoration company, or maybe still does, and now they're trying to sell you something, 
Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, they know what they're talking about. Um, there is a lot of misinformation out there. It's one of the reasons why I personally, I'm not on Facebook much anymore. I, I just got tired of arguing with people. It's just not worth my time to correct mistakes I see. And the mistakes are so voluminous um, that I don't, I don't think I'd have the time to do it either. So if you're looking for a digital marketing and advertising expert, we are one. We can answer questions. Uh, we don't charge for phone calls. We don't have a boot camp. Um, you just book a call and I'll talk to you and, and probably tell you a lot of the things you're doing wrong. Um, but I'll definitely give you a template for if you want to succeed in this space, here's what you do. And if you don't want us to do it for you, that's fine. Uh, but the call's free and uh, we'd love to talk to you. If you'd like more information, unitedrestores.com. Go to book a call and uh, talk with me for 15 minutes and we'll uh, figure out if we can help. Take care.